today's episode. In our previous episode, we talked about being in the right atmosphere to receive your miracles. We talked about hearing the word in the right atmosphere. So you've heard the word, you've believed it, you've acted on it, and you've received your miracle. In today's episode, we're going to expound on whether or not it's possible to lose your miracle. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, of, of course. Like, this question is, <laughs> of course. Is it look, possible to so, lose your miracle? Of course, it's very possible to lose your miracle. Okay. In fact, not even looking at the healing aspects. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the miracle of Peter even walking on water. Mm-hmm. The miracle happened. Right. Yeah. Peter was literally walking on water. And then what happens? The Bible said when he looked at the waves, mm-hmm. he became afraid. You understand? Yeah. And he lost that miracle. Mm-hmm. He fell into the water and then he now had to be saved. He was literally drowning. So yes, of course, you can lose your miracle. Mm. The fact that you you were, you know, uh, this is what actually borders on when people say, oh, the pastor is fake because, or the miracle is fake because when I went, though the thing left, it came back. Maybe it was my yeah. mind. That's mm. so you know, people say it was in my mind. Yeah. Uh, it was probably adrenaline. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, made me, that made me get out. That made him get out from the wheelchair. You know, but it's very possible to actually use, lose your miracle because you have to maintain your miracle. Mm. Because of what I said, there is a logic or there is a an atmosphere that still must be consistent in your life. So let me give you these few points. The first thing, right, and we see it in John chapter 5, okay. verse 14. Then the Lord Jesus said, After what Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Okay. So a sinful nature, you understand mm-hmm. the lord jesus has you know he died for us he resurrected you know he saved us from sin but there are sinful acts i'll give you an example let's say you drink a lot of alcohol mm. Mm. and mm. it affected your liver <laughs> you have a liver problem or you smoke mm. hey, you smoke heavy you have you smoke very heavily Sometimes. right the doctors are <laughs> 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 you smoke very heavily and you went and you received your your miracle like right. your lungs look good now you no longer have this issue or maybe you had cirrhosis the it's no longer there anymore mm. then you know you go back to uh since it's gone why don't i <laughs> back you to know, your life this thing yeah. is so interesting because in like the medical field you see patients who come in with you know certain like what what you were saying you know lung diseases Mm -hmm. liver diseases and then you're able to be probably save the patient and something we call that um lifestyle modifications and we see this a lot where patients end up you know oh i'm fine doctor no i'm I'm going to do what i i was doing before you know for those who don't understand that's spanish for you know um, the doctor (laughs) said has cleared me so i can go back to doing what i was doing forgetting that you know there is still you know there are certain practices that you still have to maintain Mm. you know diet changes you know definitely not going back to smoking or drinking you know all those things so i'm just like it's so interesting because you know even on our side right when a patient is quote unquote clear some patients come in with cancer and then after you know chemotherapy and all that there are still certain lifestyle modifications that they have to right. um, undergo mm-hmm. because yes. there is the chances of the cancer you know returning and coming back so i just had to make that comment just because you know it was very yeah. very you know interesting <laughs> exactly in that line. Like even a worse thing would come on today you see yeah. so something worse can come because of that act now in the second point in matthew chapter 12 verse 43 to 44 it says 
when the unclean spirit is gone out so here the lord jesus is speaking about you know when someone is demon possessed and mm. is casted out it says when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none mm. then he said i will return into my house from whence i came out and when he is come he findeth it empty swept and garnished Mm. You see, finished. so exactly finished, like Degreated. very empty, no word, literally. So the next one is when there is no word of God in you, when there's emptiness mm. in you, because when you're when a healing, especially when it happens with the healing, you know sometimes or most times a demon is casted out of you, right. you mm. spirit of infirmity come out, you know you spirit of blindness come out, it has gone out. Now mm. when you are in a specific environment where you are not, you know, people have that same mindset again. Yeah. You know, I came for a Friday miracle, or I came for a specific <laughs> crusade, mm -hmm. and I got healed. That's my healing. They are no longer going to church. Mm -hmm. They've right. received their healing. So no yeah. more <laughs> the word of God. The Bible says something far worse yes. because He's going to bring more wicked demons. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, oh, oh, oh. commanders. <laughs> They are coming now with something far worse. So the person, you know, no longer has the word. He's gone back to his normal state. Maybe he's not praying anymore. Okay. No spiritual activity whatsoever. No longer going to the church. Back to the old life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because you've received what you wanted, which was your healing. You understand? And most of the time, something worse actually okay. comes back. Yeah. So I remember this issue of a woman who came to church and she got healed. And she went back to her old life, not listening to the word of God, sleeping, not praying. But prior to that, before she received healing, she was praying, mm. like taking God more serious. Coming to all the programs, programs and everything, midweek or <laughs> first person. But after that, she stopped and the, the sickness came back again. Mm. As the demon, the demon came back and the sickness even came back worse. So she had to come and tell pastor that, oh, the sickness has come back oh, again. Really? Mm. Yeah, you know, in medicine, we call that non-compliance. So mm. you are not compliant to your treatment you know, um, program or the treatment plan that has been, you know, laid right. out for you. So, mm. oh, you know, you are probably on certain medications and, you know, for somebody with hypertension, you're probably oh. on your anti-hypertensives. And then, oh, for some time, you've recorded that... Um, your BPs have been normal for some time and so oh you know what I'm Good fine the doctor said I'm fine so mm -hmm. then that just comes to you being non-compliant on the medications and mm -hmm. then then in turn, they're like, oh, maybe the medication wasn't good or this or this. And we usually are able to find that out when the patient probably comes back in a mm. crisis or something. It's like, have you been taking your medication? Like, oh, so I when thought the worst I was has already okay. Happened. Right. Yeah. 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 I see. That's, that's actually very interesting. And just to not to belabor the point, the last part of it is in Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. And it says, that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, mm. which dwelleth in us. Wow. So one of the ways that you can actually lose your miracle is not walking by faith, mm. you know, not walking in the power of God. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe your prayer life even dwindles more. Mm. Before, because of your illness, you know, you were very at it with your <laughs> prayer. You yeah. had a good fellowship with God, mm. you know, but now you've received everything that you wanted. So mm. you don't pray as much. You are not fellowshipping with God mm. more, you see. Mm -hmm. So when that thing happens, the Bible says we keep everything that we receive by God, by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So your fellowship with the Holy Ghost is extremely important. You have to, you know, have that devotion time with the Holy Ghost. You have to, you know, Keep at what you were doing before, mm. you know, especially once you knew that you received it from God. Mm. So those are the three main points, and I would reiterate, I would restate them. is the sinful lifestyle, you understand, and that was in John chapter 5, verse 14. The having no word of God, that emptiness, mm -hmm. not doing the, having no word of God in you to keep that faith atmosphere. And the last is not fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost. And you know, this it's is so exactly interesting because I remember in the previous episode, I mentioned how um, medicine and, you know, faith, you know, are not conflicting. In, they're not bashing each other. Mm. You know, just going off this last point, the, 
I see it all in the medical field. There's something where, you know, your, your doctor knows you. Yeah. Yeah. Your doctor has your case file. Mm. Your doctor is able to, you know, study your progress over time. Right. Mm. And so when you stop coming for some time, it sends off certain red flags. Mm. Like, okay, why is this woman not been coming? You know, she's not been coming for her weekly checkup or yeah. she's not been coming to the OPD right. for right. us to check and be sure everything is okay. And so I'm just saying it to Bashir's the point just to, you know, show that, you know, yes, you see the the phys the spiritual aspect of things are there and the physical aspect is also there where you have to keep going back yeah. you know um for you know because opd usually once a week right, yeah, right? Yeah. so you come every week to come and check is everything okay mm. or oh, has this changed has it, are you still staying on this are you still staying on this treatment mm. regimen and all that so i'm just saying it to say that you see there is no divide they yeah. go mm. hand mm. in hand sometimes mm. you know the the strength of whatever particular medication you were taking would now be reduced if you're taking 40 mg before now they're like no, okay reduce. take 20 take 10 you know so that collision does not necessarily have to exist or doesn't it because it can go hand in hand interesting yeah. you know when when this topic is very very sensitive to my heart because mm. you know hearing from the medical perspective as well you can tell like i remember you quite said that um the doctor also wants you well yeah, yeah. Mm. you see when people say miracles are not real or they are staged there's some insensitivity in there mm. yeah mm. how can someone who has been going through so much pain for all these years has f a family you know you have friends you have um a life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you actually receive your healing and you can imagine you are telling everybody that you got healed and they are saying is staged mm. <laughs> it's so insensitive it's so yeah. it's unheard of it's mm. it shows how so just to you know like i said just to debate the stance of a godly stance mm. we the you know there is this understanding that if it truly happened then it was actually fake which mm. i think mm. it's it's very unheard of i i, I don't think is the right attitude to mm. to to these things i just yeah. wanted to say something too uh about your second point the word of god when you get healed the devil will try and come back and test whether you still have feet so was that your instance yeah that was my instance so even after after i got healed personally uh, i stopped hearing the voices the voices still came back mm. and that's when i had to act my so feet. did you did you think so when the voices came did you think ah uh, this miracle <laughs> thing did so initially because initially, because initially. if i went yeah, there yeah, maybe yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you see pastor i was i've been hearing pastor's messages a lot so you kept listening i kept listening mm. right and pastor said you have to declare you have to speak god's work mm. god's word sorry into it we speak the truth of god into mm. it saying that you are healed and after so a while you insist on the yes, miracle you insist on it so maybe you got healed you know you are healed you couldn't raise your hand mm. now you can raise it then you sleep you wake up one morning it's like you can't raise it mm. you speak this hand can raise you keep, keep trying mm. you keep trying you keep insist you have to insist on that miracle to happen in your case yeah so when that happened so you kept insisting Sisting on it you said no these voices so are not no. so did you speak mm. you start speaking that i am healed you speak to the illness that mm. you are healed you speak to your body you speak I'm to your healed body. i'm healed like what's the question doing speak to that body mm. you are healed it's not in you anymore so then what happened then the voices on initially, initially they were not going but after a while they just stopped when they see they can't so you kept insisting and kept insisting, insisting. and it just then stopped. it just stopped yes, just like that just like that amazing wow. that was very interesting Yes, so this conversation is just making me think about unbelievers who go to a miracle meeting and hear the word of God, believe it in that moment, receive their miracle, and go back to that sinful nature because mm. that it's their nature, right? I'm just thinking of the importance of letting them know that, yes, you've received your miracle. Who gave you that miracle was Jesus Christ. Now you have to believe in him mm -hmm. right um confess with your mouth that he's the lord of your life because yes. the points that you've mentioned right these are points that christians live by mm. yeah. right so for an unbeliever how would they keep 
whatever they've received, this healing they've received mm. by the Holy Spirit. Mm. They don't know the Holy Spirit, yes. mm. right? So they would have to know Jesus for themselves. So after they've come to a service, received their healing, yes. they, would, they would have to now believe in the Jesus that gave them that yes. healing. That's what you received. You keep by the Holy yes. Ghost. Yes. Yes. So, and then confess with their mouth. Exactly. Yeah. And then. So, your salvation ahead. is very important in that mm -hmm. case, right. especially if you are not a believer. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord Jesus can heal you. The Lord Jesus loves everyone. Mm -hmm. I said, God wants everyone well, right. irrespective of whether you're Christian or not. Mm -hmm. So, a Muslim can be healed in a crusade. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, a, anybody that's not a Christian can be healed in a crusade. But right. your salvation is also very important mm -hmm. in that aspect, especially yeah. in keeping your healing. Yes. Yeah. This has been a very insightful conversation. We've told you everything you need to know to maintain your miracle. So at this point, it's up to you to actually do it. See you in the next episode. Leave any comments or questions down below. Love you. Bye. Mm -hmm.